So President Joe Biden just got the worst imaginable news and it showed with his State of the Union address. So he and former President Donald Trump, they're now kind of like neck and neck in the presidential contest. However, even with Trump facing numerous charges in New York, Georgia, and Florida, not to mention Letitia James, Fannie Willis, and Nathan Wade all going after him for many different legal issues, Trump still has the edge. He's not the guy that's sitting in the White House as illegal immigrants flood into the country. As the price of everything shoots up with inflation, he's not the guy that's in control of billions of dollars of U.S. taxpayer money being sent to all corners of the world. Now, in relation to that, he said something very incredibly controversial when it comes to the war in Gaza. And guys, before we get into this, all I ask is that you take one second and drop a quick like for the video. I totally appreciate you guys. I wanna thank you so much for always sharing these videos. You guys are amazing. The plan of President Joe Biden is to create a temporary pier in the Mediterranean on the coast of Gaza. The goal of this pier is to receive large shipments of water, food, and medicine. Don't worry though, because he's also promised that this doesn't mean that American troops would have to be deployed on the ground. Tonight, I'm directing the US military to lead an emergency mission to establish a temporary pier in the Mediterranean on the coast of Gaza that can receive large shipments carrying food, water, medicine, and temporary shelters. No U.S. boots will be on the ground. A temporary pier will enable a massive increase in the amount of humanitarian assistance getting into Gaza every day. But many in the Democratic Party are just irked by the White House's support of Israel, especially since there's been numerous civilian casualties in Palestine. At this time, Israel supports the deployment of a temporary dock for humanitarian aid. Now, of course, the president used his State of the Union address as an opportunity to get his voters back on his side, especially since he's going to need a lot of help by November. He discussed a couple of his campaign promises. Those include the protection of Social Security and Medicare and lowering costs for Americans, which led many critics to ask, Weren't these the same things that he promised that he was going to do his during his first term? He talked about lowering costs, but then inflation shot up. He talked about protecting Social Security. And then you got SSA asking beneficiaries for hundreds, if not thousands of dollars in overpayments. So what's up with the old promises? And now you're making new promises? I don't know if you're necessarily trustworthy, Mr. Biden, which makes it understandable that many people like us were just skeptical. We've been told to just wait and watch and see what happens because that's what they've told us. And this was clarified by White House Press Secretary Corinne John Pierre in an interview when she said that all Americans have to do is wait. Well, Americans have been waiting <laughs> to be patient and wait for costs to come down because the president, he's doing the best job that any president can do. That's what we're being told. Even though millions of Americans are struggling with their expenses as local governments use taxpayer money to fund illegal immigrants. Now you can see why critics were not very convinced because she's basically telling us that it's going to take more than one term in order, in order to get the results that they promised us back at the very beginning of President President Joe Biden's presidency. Are you really willing to wait that long? Former President Donald Trump, on the other hand, he's using Biden's mistakes against him. He's actually so confident that he can dismantle the president that he's challenged him to a debate. Now, it's notable that Trump skipped all of the GOP primary debates, but now that he's the clear nominee for the Republican Party, he seems pretty eager to get into one. So Trump went on Truth Social to challenge Biden to a debate anytime, anywhere, anyplace. But like I said a while ago, this is not good news for President Joe Biden. Two of the biggest concerns for voters is related to to the borders and the cost of living. Two main issues that Trump says that he's going to solve. The former president even said that the debate can be run by the Democratic National Committee or even by the Commission on Presidential Debates. Michael Tyler, communications director for the Biden campaign, says that Trump is just thirsty for attention and he's struggling to expand his appeal beyond the MAGA base. Tyler then said that Trump could learn a lot of things from President Joe Biden's State of the Union address, one of which was what he called delivering for the American people. Now, just a note, Biden didn't refer to Trump by name and simply called him his predecessor. Now, speaking of which, the most probable nominee for the Republican Party after this next term may be Nikki Haley. So Haley, who refused to endorse Trump after bowing out of the primary race, was blasted by Florida Governor Ron DeSantis. Haley signed a pledge to endorse the eventual Republican nominee, a promise that she says that she's no longer bound to because the RNC has changed. Ron DeSantis says that this is unbecoming of a president. If a president can't keep a simple promise, then how do you expect them to lead the nation? That makes a lot of sense if you think about it. Some analysts say that there could be another reason for the switch up though. Have you taken the prospect, the possibility of endorsing him off the table at this point? It's not anything I think about. What I have but said is- But is it off the table, Ambassador? It sounds like you are in a different place. Are people misinterpreting what you're saying? Have you moved to a place where 
you're no longer planning to endorse him. Well, I think, first of all, you're, if you talk about an endorsement, you're talking about a loss. I don't think like that. When you're in a race, you don't think about losing. You think about continuing to go forward. What I can tell you is I don't think Donald Trump or Joe Biden should be president. I don't think that we need two candidates in their 80s. I don't think we want a Joe Biden who calls his opponents fascists or a Donald Trump who calls his opponents vermin. No one wants that. I think people want a new generational leader that is going to go back to what the American dream is, what we want for our kids in a place that's something that we can be proud of again. Let me try it this way. You did sign a pledge, an RNC pledge, yeah. to support the eventual nominee. Do you still feel bound by that pledge? I have always said that I have serious concerns about Donald Trump. I have even more concerns about Joe Biden. So is that a no? Are you bound by the RNC pledge? I, the RNC pledge, I mean, at the time of the debate, we had to take it to where would you support the nominee? And you had to, in order to get on that debate stage, you said yes. The RNC is now not the same RNC. Now it's So you're no Trump's longer bound by that pledge? No, I think I'll make what decision I want to make, but that's not something I'm thinking of. It's because Haley supporters are much more likely to support Biden than Trump. A recent survey found that 63% of Haley supporters would vote for Biden rather than Trump. Only 27% of them confirmed that they would support Trump on November, while 10% were undecided. So President Joe Biden has already called on Haley supporters to join his campaign, saying that if Trump doesn't want them, they'll be free to tag along with him. Haley's decision to not endorse Trump may have actually had a hand in this situation. And it's also why critics are wary of Haley and her refusal to keep her pledge. There are those who have outright called her a rhino, while others are saying that she's the best Democrat that's ever run for the Republican primary. Now, on the topic of supporters, Trump is gearing up for his November campaign by meeting with possible donors. One of them is billionaire Elon Musk. So Elon Musk recently met with Donald Trump along with unnamed wealthy Republican donors in Florida. To date, Elon Musk did not endorse Trump both in 2016 and 2020. The two don't seem to always see eye to eye. So, you know, it's a little bit, it's still unsure as to what actually transpired during this recent meeting. Some speculate that Trump is looking to get a loan from Elon Musk to pay off some of his legal fines. Others say that this is mostly to attract donors and getting Elon Musk on your side would help immensely with that. And since we already talked about the wealthy, we should probably discuss part of the State of the Union address by President Joe Biden. So in it, the president vowed to hike corporate minimum taxes and cut deductions for executive pay and corporate jets. The plan from Biden is expected to cut the federal deficit by $3 trillion over 10 years while supposedly cutting taxes for low-income Americans. It's also aimed at helping middle-class home buyers by giving first-time home buyers a new tax credit of $400 per month for two years. Raising taxes for the rich might not be as favorable for wealthy donors though. However, many say that since most of the promises that President Joe Biden gave at the start of his campaign never came to fruition, there's a chance that nothing will happen with this as well. Kind of like the boy who cried wolf. Now, we gotta understand that most, if not all lawmakers, they give out promises to Americans during the election season. It could be about social security, the housing market, the cost of living, the border, and basically anything that the American people care about. The only difference is which of the two people would you actually believe in terms of actually fulfilling the promises that they make. As far as myself, I'm gonna do my best to keep you guys informed of the truth every single day. And I just wanna thank you guys so much for always liking these videos. Thank you for subscribing to the channel and I'll see you on the next one.